Boy, we're three for three here with the Amazon products, huh? So this was really interesting to me. I've been covering the whole world of modding Amazon devices to run a bunch of custom stuff, like on both Amazon Kindles and Fire tablets. And as it turns out, there's a lot of issues on the Amazon Echo side too, even recently. So I had to check this out for myself. In case you're not familiar with Echoes, they're another part of Amazon's line of smart devices that have stuff like Alexa built in. So you can do things like play music on them, watch videos on Amazon Prime and YouTube, and even do stuff like make calls. Oh, hell. But apart from them being pretty locked down devices to begin with, literally just a few months ago, Amazon decided that they're gonna start displaying full screen ads on people's displays. From random shows to promotions for Amazon products, and there's no way to turn this off. Now here's the thing, Amazon didn't sell these as ad supported devices. They totally could have though. Amazon sells subsidized devices all the time. And if you want one without any ads, you just pay a little bit more and get a better ad free experience. But they didn't do that. Instead, they sold it to people at full price and then years later decided to actually start running ads on it. And by the way, if you're dealing with this, I've heard complaining to Amazon support will get you a partial refund. So it's maybe worth a shot. <laughs> now people have been trying really hard to get around this with workarounds, like setting it to kids mode or switching it to another country. That one doesn't work anymore, unfortunately. But the point still stands. They never mark these as ad supported devices. It's kind of scummy to go back on your word on a five-year-old purchase and actually go, actually, never mind. We're gonna put ads on your alarm screen, but hey, you won't even notice. But you know what we do here? When companies close a door, monitors open a window. And thanks to an awesome developer named Roger Ortiz, we now have a jailbreak that lets you completely remove all the Amazon Fire OS software and replace it with a fully functional Android build, opening up a lot of different possibilities. I have so many to show you, it's so cool. Now, as of this video, this can only be done on the first model Echo Show devices, specifically the 2019 Echo Show 5 and the 2019 Echo Show 8, which we're gonna cover here. Now, I did talk with a developer of the jailbreak and he did mention he's releasing support for the 2021 Echo Show 5, like a few days after I post this, but there's no plans for anything past that right now. And unless more people start looking into researching these things, there's not much we can really do about that. But that's okay, we'll take back our devices where we can, even if it's just starting small like this. And remember, this could be patched up at any time. So instead of leaving a comment asking if this still works on X firmware or whatever, check the description first, read the forum link. It'll have all the up-to-date information you need. And you know, maybe subscribe while you're down there too. We're like two subs away from hitting 400K. <laughs> all right, cool. So let me show you how this works. So the first thing you're gonna wanna check is your Echo's firmware version. Currently at the time of this video, you're gonna want this firmware version to be able to jailbreak. Right now, mine is a little bit lower than that. So I'm gonna update to get to the proper firmware. Expect this to change over time though. It's gonna take a minute, but that's okay. Just be patient. After a quick reboot, we're good to go. Now we can go flash the jailbreak. All right, let's go prepare it first. First thing we gotta grab is the Kindle Fire Drivers so we can actually talk to the Echo. I'll link this in the description. It takes like 30 seconds to install. Cool. Now let's go download the actual jailbreak. Download the zip, then extract it. Now we're gonna start this thing unplugged for now because we have to put it in a sort of recovery mode first. Okay, so as soon as we plug in the Echo again, we're gonna hold all three of the buttons on the top. It's a little tricky, but I believe in you. Nice, wait, that's good. And if you did it right, it should boot up and you should see fast boot mode in the corner. Now the Echo actually does have a micro USB port in the back for some reason. So we're gonna use that to connect it to the computer. Pick a really good wire though, but cheapo ones might not work. I'll leave a link to a tested one in the description. Okay, let's go run the jailbreak. All we gotta do now is just run the fastbrick bat file. And if you did everything right, look, your Echo should be detected. Now we just type in yes, and stuff should be appearing on the screen. <laughs> You can kind of see me panicking here to just get everything on camera. Now this will take like a solid five minutes or so, but no matter what, do not unplug it at this point because, and I'll quote from the developer himself, do not interrupt the process after the 10 second grace period. Any interruption will permanently brick the device. Just be patient. Then after a few minutes. Ooh. Oh, hey, yeah, all right. Oh my god. Okay, I gotta figure out what the fuck I'm gonna do now. Okay, wait. <laughs> hey, you. Yeah, you, the person specifically watching this, David from California. I know you've been putting off seeing a doctor because you don't know who to call or where to go or what to do or anything like that. Now you can go check out that thing that you're worried about with their sponsor, ZocDoc. 
which is a completely free service that makes it really easy to find doctors near you and pick someone that fits exactly your need. Whether you need to search by location, insurance, profession, or anything else, ZocDoc will find someone for you locally or online, and you can even check out reviews left by verified patients so you can see what other people are also saying about their experience. And when you're ready, you can book an appointment right then and there and usually meet them within 72 hours of booking the appointment. And with over 100,000 different providers ranging from general doctors to psychiatrists, dermatologists, whatever you need, I'm sure you'll find someone that's right for you. All right, it's time to stop seeing putting off a doctor. It's way easier now. Click the link in the description or scan the QR code right here to give it a try. It's 100% free. And thanks to ZocDoc for supporting the channel so we can keep making cool videos like this. Man, the screen takes me back. Yeah, this poor Echo was never designed to see the screen. <laughs> so this is TWRP. Uh, it's an app that's designed to get you backstage access to your Android devices. Now from here, there's two paths that you can really approach this in. You can just keep your Fire OS and then just sideload any custom apps that you want, which is fine. Or you can do what everyone actually wants to do, which is completely wipe Fire OS from the Echo and replace it with just stock Android, opening up a whole world of possibilities. Now, if you do end up doing this, I cannot stress this enough, make a backup of your Fire OS. I'm not lying here, we are wiping Fire OS entirely. There's no going back. So if you ever, ever even consider that you might wanna revert back to stock Fire OS, back up your firmware. I'll leave these command prompts in the description somewhere. Cool, now we can safely install Android. There's a wonderful write-up on how to get this whole thing set up after you've gotten to the TWRP screen, but I'll be quick. We're just gonna press wipe and wipe data, system, and cache. Congrats, you just de amazon your Echo. Like it's it's gone, like it's, it's not there no more. Now, instead of hitting reboot, we can go back to the main menu, hit advanced and ADB sideload. This will put the Echo in a state where we can start flashing stuff to it. Awesome. Now let's go grab the Lineage OS ROM, which is our actual Android installation. Also, if you wanna have stuff like Google Play Store and all the other Google stuff, you can download a package for that too. I'll link that in the description. Okay, we're ready. Let's go to where we downloaded those files and open a new terminal in there. Now let's type ADB devices to see what our Echo's actual serial number is. Okay, cool. So we're gonna use that and type in a command to send over the lineage ROM. Just copy my setup, but with your serial number instead. Then hit enter, and then stuff should be happening on your screen at this point. <laughs> By the way, sometimes the screen might turn off. It's okay. Just slide to unlock to keep it on, don't worry. All right, we're done. Now, if you wanna install the Play Store at this point, instead of hitting reboot, you're just gonna hit back and then just go right back into ADB sideload. Then just repeat the same process for the Google Apps zip file. Once that's done, you're all ready to reboot and cross your fingers that everything works. <laughs> I'm usually never nervous about this stuff. But if this fails, I'm gonna have to buy another one, so. Oh, hey, hey, that's lineage. Oh, dude, okay, okay, okay. Okay, that took a really long time, but we're going, we're there, ah. Okay, it's taking a little minute. Just remember, uh, you know, this is like a six-year-old processor at this point. <laughs> just, you know, just be patient, be a little bit patient. You know, it's still, it's still got a lot of life in it still. You know, it's got a banging speaker that I think sounds really nice. So I'm gonna skip this for now, but look, it does work. We got Google Apps installed, which is kind of cool. Let's we'll skip that. But it is, it is possible now. So we got Play Store for sure set up on here. All right, we're in, look at that. We got the Play Store, we got Google Search. Oh my God, this is actually running on an Echo. That's so crazy. All right, so what's really funny about the setup now is your mute button is now your lock button. So if you want to lock the device, it's just, you know, just use the, the mute button now. Do the volume still work? No, they do not. Wait, ah, I take it back. Oh, it works. Never mind. It does work. That's so cool, dude. This is huge, dude. Like, this is actually so crazy. You know what's crazy? It's actually not that bad in terms of speed. It's pretty decent. I mean, 2019, right? But like, wow. Okay, cool. So now that we got Android running on this, what can we do with it? Well, we're running with some pretty lean specs here, <laughs> only about five and a half gigs total of storage and one gig of RAM. So our choices here are gonna have to be pretty light. But now that we have access to the Google Play Store, we can download the actual full feature set music apps that we want, like Apple Music or Spotify or whatever. <laughs> and it's not like a stripped down version either. Everything here works perfectly with lyrics and everything. Or honestly, you can just download anything at this point, <laughs> like Bellatro at three seconds per frame. Oh my God. Oh Jesus, that's so bassy. Ah, I've never seen Bellatro lag ever. There's no way. Oh. Okay, 
All right, the whole thing's just falling apart. I gotta hurry. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, that was, oh, yeah, that worked, nice. Or Discord for some reason. Hey guys, Amazon Echo. This is what I feel most people want to do, just download their Apple Music or Spotify apps and be done with it. I don't have Spotify, I'm just be honest, yeah, I don't, I don't. <laughs> But that's pretty basic in my opinion, so what else can we do? Well, since it's running Android, I can also replicate a lot of the stuff that I managed to do with the modded Amazon Fire tablets. So you can turn it into a really decent second monitor using a program called Space Desk. And since the Amazon Echo doubles as a really great speaker, it can totally live under your monitor forever and not as just some cool gimmick. Casual use of the hard R. Um, oh, really? It's jarring. Like, actually be pretty useful for listening to stuff. Or you can use the app Fully Kiosk Browser to show off an app called Desk Thing, which is a really nice music controller for Spotify and Apple Music, whatever, which looks really nice in my opinion. I've seen some people already doing this on Blue Sky. If you want more info about this application in depth, definitely go check out my jailbroken Amazon Fire tablet video after this, but it's, it's really, really cool. Now there's one thing that I really wanted to get working on the Echo, which is running Apple CarPlay, or at the very least, Android Auto, because I feel like that would be a really cool interface to have on this device. I spent like a whole two days trying to get this running, but I just, I couldn't get it to work. I tried Z-Link, AutoZen, Headhunt Reloaded, a lot of different things. And even though I had Google Play services installed on the Echo, so the file should just be installed on the device already, it just wouldn't boot no matter what. And I know it wasn't an app thing because any of my other Android devices were able to boot into this just fine. If anyone can figure out how we can get Android Auto running on this thing, please let me know. I think this would be huge for this device. Now, I know a lot of people use their Echoes to control their lights, play music, etc. So now that that's gone, what's our solution for that? Well, this is something that I've been really passionate about for the last few months. It's called Home Assistant. Yeah, smart home people love Home Assistant and it runs really nicely on the Echo. Now, what is this? What does it do for us? Why should we care about Home Assistant? Okay, so you know your smart home stuff, like your smart lights or your speakers or your thermostats or whatever, when you wanna turn them off or on, they record that voice command that you give them, usually send that request over to companies or like a cloud server somewhere in Idaho or something, and then comes back to your device to turn off your light. Yeah, I know it's, it's pretty ridiculous, but that's how everyone agreed to do it. Now, the thing is, this is all fine, except if for whatever reason your internet goes out or the company servers go out or Let's be honest, what more realistically is gonna happen when the company decides it's not worth supporting your smart home device anymore, you're just out of luck. Yeah, imagine Amazon has an outage again for some reason and suddenly you're just stuck without being able to turn on your lights. Well, Home Assistant basically acts as a way to control all of your smart home devices, except it's all local, it runs internally within your own house, it does not have to go outside for your network if you don't want it to. Now it does require some hardware, it can usually run like on a Raspberry Pi or a NAS or whatever, but nowadays they actually sell dedicated hardware for Home Assistant that's just literally just plug and play. If you don't feel like setting it all up by yourself, you can just buy one of these and be done with it. So I have my Home Assistant hooked up to control my thermostat, my lights, my Apple TV speakers. I even have one of those cheapo $30 wise cams set up on it to watch my dog when I'm not home. They tend to sell these really, really cheap because they expect to sell you on subscriptions for almost all of the features that you would want. But look, now I'm controlling it all locally without having to pay for any of that. And because I know you're thinking about it, you can combine this with Google Assistant to activate voice commands so you can control. Yeah, so update, literally like, as I was researching all of this, uh, it turns out Google is permanently discontinuing Google Assistant in a few months and replacing it with their own brand new AI, Google Gemini AI. I, I hate this timeline, man. Okay, well, we have a solution for that too because Home Assistant also has their own voice assistant. Hello, damn it, Jeff. You can play any text on any supported media player. That can listen for commands or keywords and execute actions based on what you asked it to do. Turn on the Christmas lights. And best part is, again, if you want, this can all be run locally. Not having to send audio recordings to outside companies or servers or anything. You can literally never connect to the internet again and this will all just work. Okay, this is all great, but what about music? What if we wanna take the same mindset that we have for all our smart home devices and apply them to our music, but you know, still be able to play Spotify and stuff? Well, we have an app for that too. Let me introduce you to Music Assistant. This is basically the same concept as Home Assistant, but for all of your music instead. So you can control and play all your music through here, but it's not just for local files. You can connect your Apple Music, your Spotify, Tidal, SoundCloud, Pandora, just kidding, you're not using Pandora, <laughs> and have all of your libraries in one place. The idea is to put all of your music libraries into one central spot that can be streamed everywhere on anything. 
And here's the cool part. Music Assistant makes the Echo act as a regular casting device. So you can pair it up with Home Assistant to start commands, and now it's a really nice wireless Spotify, Apple Music, whatever music player. You can even control it from other devices too, just like Spotify. Music Assistant also gives you a whole bunch of other features too, like being able to group speakers together, lyric support, and a lot more. Oh, and if you're a host everything locally kind of guy, honorable mention of Plex Amp. Yeah, Plex has its own system for locally hosted music, and I think it's really nice and can also be controlled from other devices. If you already use Plex a lot, definitely give it a try. I'm having a lot of fun with these Echoes now that they're stripped from all the Amazon stuff. I'm gonna keep these in my apartment now since I can really control how I want them set up. Now, the only issue I happen to run into when running Android on these things is the camera, it just, it just doesn't work right now. If you try to open it, it just crashes. So you do lose some functionality there. But maybe that's a plus for some people. I love the idea of modifying and customizing my own smart speaker exactly how I wanted to. I thought, is there any like stock options for a speaker with a screen on it that just runs basic stock Android? And it turns out, no. I just straight up nothing on the market that's just an Echo, but with Android instead. It's it's crazy. Like I found stuff like this that's kind of like what I want, but Nothing from a reputable company. It's so weird. Listen, I think companies are starting to get way too comfortable changing the terms after the point of sale. It's really starting to frustrate me. And you know, while we can't unfortunately detach from every single service because it's just not how our world was designed, taking back ownership in little ways like this is the best thing you could possibly do for your little device. It's getting to a point now where, no joke, I've spent the last year detaching myself from as many cloud services as I can and self-hosting almost everything myself from Dropbox to music, movies, games, a bunch of other stuff. If there's enough interest in it, I might end up doing a video about the process. So let me know if that's something you'd want to watch. Anyways, click over here to check out a really relevant video to this topic. And thanks for watching.